I'm just recording it. <laughs> Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining class today. I hope you all had a good night's rest. I know it's very early for some of you, uh, very early in the morning, but uh, thank you for joining class. Um, uh, we'll just begin with a word of prayer. Let's uh, pray. Father, we thank you for another day that you've added into our lives. We thank you for your uh, faithfulness, your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy over our lives, Father. We thank you that you have sustained us thus far. And even as we have stepped into another new day, we know that you, O oh God, uh, will perform all things for us, that you will do everything that concerns us because you are a good and a faithful God. We thank you for every student, uh, who is joined, who will be joining us. For those who are not able to, we bless each one of them. We speak uh, health and strength. We speak your favor. We speak your uh, goodness over their lives, Father God. We pray that even as uh, they um, learn and study your word, we pray that um, you would equip them, God, to be effective ministers, to be diligent, to be sincere, to persevere, and to continue running their race with perseverance, fixing their eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter, the finisher of the race. We just bless uh, our internet uh, connection that will be strong. We pray that the sound will be good. We pray that everything will go well. Our classes today for everyone, God, and we just bless this day and we thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope the sound is uh, good this morning. Is it clear? Is it better? Yes, Pastor. Yes, yes. It's okay. very good. <laughs> Thank you. Just set it up with the office staff for the day before. So, yeah. Uh, so last week, uh, we were doing chapter four uh, about uh, sin, the fall and salvation. We saw uh, what is a sin. We looked at um, uh, the consequences of sin in uh, a person's life. We also saw uh, what happens to a believer, somebody who is born again, uh, when they continue to sin, what uh, happens? And then we looked at salvation. We uh, we saw salvation as uh, a complete package. Um, and uh, we looked at the Greek word sozo. And uh, through that, we knew that salvation is not just forgiveness of our sins, but has all uh, other aspects as well. It's about uh, uh, forgiveness, it's about uh, deliverance, uh, preservation from harm and danger, deliverance from sin and Satan, uh, healing, uh, freedom from every curse, from every bondage, uh, from demonic bondages and strongholds, and uh, total wholeness. So that is what uh, Christ purchased for us on the cross. Uh, today we'll begin uh, chapter 5, the doctrine of redemption justification and uh, sanctification. So when you think of this word redeem uh, or redemption, a God redeeming mankind, uh, what comes to your mind? Paying the price for our sins. Okay, paying the price for our sins. Thank you, John. What is uh, the other's understanding of the word redeem or redemption, redeeming? God is reconcilement of man to himself. Thank you. God is uh, reconciling man back to himself. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Jesus Christ purchasing us from the uh, bondage of sin. Okay, Jesus Christ purchasing us from uh, the bondage of sin. Thank you, Selatoli. Okay, so the, we look at the doctrine of uh, redemption today. Uh, basically, redemption refers to Jesus Christ. Uh, purchasing believers from the slavery of sin, 
or uh, being slaves of uh, Satan and setting us free from the bondage of uh, sin, setting us free from being slaves of Satan uh, through his sacrificial death, through his death on the uh, cross. Now, in your notes, there is an expert from uh, Baker's Evangelical Dictionary of uh, Biblical Theology. I'll just like to read it and then I'll explain that. It says, the expert says that the central theme of redemption in scripture is that God has taken the initiative to act compass compassionately on behalf of those who are powerless to help themselves. The New Testament makes clear that divine redemption includes God's identification with humanity in its plight and the securing of liberation of humankind through the obedience, suffering, death, and resurrection of the incarnate Son. So what uh, it really means here is that God has taken the initiative to act uh, compassion compassionately on behalf of uh, all of us who are powerless to help ourselves. We are powerless to redeem ourselves from, from sin. Um, we are powerless to redeem ourselves uh, uh, from being slaves or under the authority of uh, Satan. Uh, so God took the initiative to act and he did this out of his compassion, out of his love, uh, because we were powerless. And divine redemption uh, basically includes uh, God identifying with humanity, uh, God becoming man. And so hence, uh, you know, he uh, identifies uh, with our humanity. He identifies with our struggles. He identifies with our difficulties. And uh, he came to liberate us. Okay. And how did Christ liberate us? Uh, he obeyed the will of the Father. He did the will of the Father. Uh, and he completed the plan of redemption uh, or the plan of salvation. Uh, and he did this by suffering on behalf of us, by taking on our sins, uh, by taking and paying the penalty for our sins, which is death. The punishment for sin is death. The wages of sin is death. And uh, he died in our place and he resurrected back to life and hence we are uh, you know we have been justified we have been restored back to god uh, we have been redeemed and we are in the process of being sanctified being made like um, christ okay so that is just a, a, an understanding from baker's evangelical dictionary of biblical uh, theology uh, to understand more about uh, this word redemption or what it really means uh, we we'll look at various scripture passages and we will also study the various uh, uh, greek words and which will give us a better understanding of uh, uh, of what redemption means okay so like uh, Two of you to uh, read, uh, one can read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, and uh, someone else can read Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. So one of you please read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Someone else can read Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. Ephesians 1, 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Thank you. Uh, can someone else read Colossians 1, 12 to 14? Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Thank you. So in both these verses, we see that uh, we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We've received forgiveness of our sins through the blood of uh, Jesus. So we look at um, a few Greek words, uh, which when translated means redemption, but will just give us a better understanding of this, uh, of the doctrine of redemption. The first Greek word is agorizo. Okay, which means, uh, you know, going to the market, to go to the market. Uh, and uh, it also means bought. Okay, it's basically uh, describes a place or the marketplace where, um, you know, or the slave market uh, where slaves are uh, 
auctioned or sold and people come and buy these slaves. We don't have slave market anymore, um, but it was there, you know, during Paul's time. Um, so to understand uh, this whole uh, doctrine of redemption, we look at this word agorizo and other Greek words as well. So the first Greek word is agorizo, which means uh, go to uh, to go to market or bought, which basically describes uh, the marketplace, uh, specifically the slave market. So what did God buy at this market? We're talking about in the spiritual sense, what did God buy in at this market? The entire humanity. Yes, he. thank you, John. He bought us uh, who were slaves uh, slaves in the market, uh, slaves of sin, slave of Satan, slave of uh, all uh, our wrongdoings, and God bought us. So where do we see this uh, uh, Greek word agorizo in the Bible? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 20, and Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. So can uh, one of you please read uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 20? And uh, someone else can read Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Thank you. So here the word you were bought is, the Greek word is agorizo. Uh, and you were bought at a price. Okay. Uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Thank you. Uh, so here the word redeemed, you are worthy to take the scroll to open its seals and you were slain and have redeemed. The word redeemed there is agorizo. Okay. So how do we know that God bought uh, us? How do we know that he brought us from this slave market? We know it from this Greek word called ex agorizo. So we looked at agorizo, but there's another Greek word called ex agorizo which means uh, to purchase a slave out of a slave market. So agorizo is bought or to go to a market, but ag agorizo means that it is to purchase a slave out of a slave market. Uh, we see this Greek word ex agorizo uh, uh, in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, and Galatians chapter 4, verses uh, 4 and 5. So can one of you please uh, read Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, and someone else can read Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, please. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Thank you, Rosalind. So here uh, uh, in this verses, we see Christ has redeemed. The word redeemed there in Greek is ex exerizo. So Christ has uh, redeemed us from the curse of the law. Uh, can someone else read Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, please? But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adopt adoption as sons. Thank you, uh, Zilatoli. So here, uh, you know, born of a woman, born under the law to ex exerizo, that the word redeemed there is ex exerizo, uh, those who are under the law. So God bought us 
uh, he purchased us out of the slave market. So God had to buy us uh, from sin and Satan. Um, uh, we could not buy ourselves because the price was too high. There was nothing that we could do, uh, you know, to pay the price that was set uh, uh, for purchasing us or redeeming us out of uh, sin uh, from uh, slavery or uh, being under the dominion of uh, Satan. Um, so we see that, you know, when we go to the market, uh, you know, there's, we don't get anything free. We always have to uh, pay money and we have to buy what we want. And the same way, you know, God uh, had to pay a price too. He had to pay a price uh, to purchase us out of the slave um, market. Now, this is not in your notes, but uh, I just wanted to, um, you know, uh, throw some light on this. So did uh, God have to pay a price to sin or did he have to pay a price to Satan? To purchase us. So did Jesus have to pay the price to, or God had to pay the price to for sin or uh, to Satan to purchase us out of the slave market? Ma'am, price for the sin. Had to pay the price for the sin, okay. It's Satan, ma'am. Satan, okay. So the, the was a ransom paid uh, to sin or to Satan? One of you say sin. Some to sin, say sin, I say. To not sin? to Satan. Okay, why not to Satan? Yes, it is for Satan because uh, like in the Garden of Eden, like because of him, like he, he took the authority that God gave Adam. Okay, it's thank you. Yes, when, uh, when um, uh, you know, God uh, created Adam and Eve, he gave them dominion to take uh, 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 and to subdue the earth and to rule over the earth uh, and to uh, till the soil and to grow and to multiply. Uh, but when we sinned, we gave over our uh, dominion to Satan. Okay. Yes, Lubega, you had your hand up, I thought. No, ma'am, I withdrew my hand. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, we were in bondage to uh, sin and Satan, uh, but there was no ransom paid either to sin or to Satan himself because they had no power uh, to demand such a uh, payment from God. Uh, you know, nor was Satan uh, one whose holiness was, uh, his holiness was not uh, offended by sin. And, uh, and he did not require a penalty to be paid for uh, sin. But it was, um, you know, it, and it was also not God who held us in bondage, um, uh, but we were held on to bondage by sa Satan and our own sins. Uh, so we see that, you know, it's just sufficient to know that a price was paid and the price was paid by the death of Christ and was the result was that we were redeemed from uh, bondage. Okay, First Timothy chapter two verses five and six, Paul writes, "For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, uh, which is a testimony at the proper uh, time." So, in this context of this passage, it shows us that Christ. Uh, is the mediator. Uh, he's not the mediator between men and devil. He's not the mediator between God and the devil, but he's the mediator between men and God. Um, so so this, this verse kind of gives us a little idea that the ransom was paid by the Son of God to God the Father. Uh, uh, because Jesus is, uh, you know, as the mediator, he is. Uh, uh, he paid the ransom for us between God and ma and man. He made the atonement uh, for men to God, and uh, we see that, you know, uh, uh, in if we look at this in also in Psalms chapter forty nine verse seven, where the ransom price of a man's life is said to be owed to God. Okay, so it was. Uh, God required that uh, ransom uh, 
uh, it was not even sin, it was not even a Satan, uh, uh, because Satan had no authority, no power to demand any ransom price. Uh, and hence, it was uh, Jesus who is the mediator, uh, mediator between, uh, uh, you know, uh, men and God, God and man. And it was, it was not the mediator between a man and the devil, or it was he was not the mediator between God and the devil. Uh, and hence, we see that he purchased us from the slave market of sin. He redeemed us from the power of sin, yes, uh, uh, but there was no demand placed on both by, by Satan and sin, but it was a demand placed by God, and the ransom for uh, you know a man's life was said to be owed to God, and hence we see that uh, Jesus made uh, paid that ransom price and purchased us back to God. We were reconciled back to God. Okay, this is just some side uh, points that I've given you, some side notes. It's not there in your notes, so. Uh, I just thought we can uh, throw some light on that. Okay, so how did God buy us? Uh, you know, the, the He paid the price that was uh, quoted. Uh, what was the price that is quoted for uh, sin, for or being or being slaves of Satan? The wages of sin is death, um, and so we see that uh, Jesus Christ paid the price for our sin and the price for sin is death and hence he paid it with his own life and he bought us um, so how do we know that Jesus uh, you know uh, uh, gave his life uh, and paid for the penalty for our sins by uh, laying down his own life for us we know it from this Greek word anti lutron uh, which means a redemption price or a ransom Okay, the Greek word anti lutron which means a redemption price or a ransom and we read this in first Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 and 6 which I just now read that there is one God and one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as uh, gave himself a ransom and the Greek word there is anti lutron for all to be testified in due time. Okay, so why did God have to buy us? Uh, why did He feel like rescuing us? Any answers to that? Why did uh, God have to buy us from the slave market of sin and Satan? Why did He feel like rescuing us? I think uh, because He loved us so much. He loved mankind so much. He doesn't want mankind to, to, to be to be lost. That's I think. Thank you, uh, Isaac. That's uh, absolutely right. Uh, yes, Lubega. To fulfill his his original plan, uh, as we see in the Pronto Evangel Evangelism, where he told him the in Genesis chapter three fifteen that he the, what that day will come when the woman. The woman is son will bruise the head of Satan. So I think it was for reconcilement. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Lobega. Yes, the proto-evangel that is uh, talking about the plan of redemption that God set into plan and into uh, into uh, you know uh, fulfillment. Uh, but uh, you know, God basically had this plan of redemption also because of His love for us. Okay, even setting about or full going about fulfilling the plan of redemption or the proto evangel is because of his love for uh, us. God did not want us to be slaves of sin, he did not want us to be continue, uh, you know, uh, being under the authority and dominion of Satan. That is not how he created us. Uh, you know, he created us in a higher standing, a higher purpose, uh, just the way he is, okay? Uh, it just uh, kind of, um, it always blows my mind to think that, you know, uh, how great uh, God thinks about us or his plans for us is so great that when he just created Adam and Eve, he created them just like him. You know, he was holy, created them holy, without sin, created them without sin. He never dies. He created them never to die. He gave them a mind, a will, a heart, 
uh, to know God, to understand Him, and that is the extent of uh, His His love, His uh, the greatness that He actually shows uh, 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 of who He who He is, uh, you know, through His creation and how He created us and how He thinks about us. So uh, just imagine that you know when He died for us on the cross, and it was because of His love, He wanted. Uh, to purchase us uh, back to himself so that we can live to the standard that he created us uh, originally. Uh, but sometimes or most often, how do we live our lives? You know, we live in the same fallen state, the same state of misery and guilt in brokenness, in our emotional turmoil, um, in our pain, uh, you know, with a lot of self-pity sometimes that we're not even able to get up and, uh, you know, see the greatness of who God has created us to be and uh, walk in that. And we limit ourselves so much uh, when God is saying, uh, just look at, you know, what I think of you, where I placed you uh, or, uh, you know, how I see you. And if you just... Uh, you know, comprehend or understand how God sees us, it just kind of blows our mind uh, to his greatness and how much he loves us, uh, that he's created us. And, um, you know, it always uh, uh, is a challenge, you know, it's a challenge for me as well uh, to, to rise up to who God wants me to be or to where he has placed me to be or to see who he has uh, uh, really, uh, uh, you know, made me to be and the, the placement that he is, the standing uh, that he has uh, given us. So it is because of his love uh, that he uh, bought us, that he felt like rescuing us. He did not want us to be slaves of sin and continue living that way. Uh, it just shows how what a gracious, merciful and loving God uh, we have. Okay, so God wanted us to be set free from sin and from slavery. Uh, how do we know this? Uh, we know this uh, from the Greek word lutro. Okay, we just looked at anti-Lutron, uh, agarizo, ex -ex agarizo, and now we look at another Greek word called Lutro. And Lutro means to set a captive free uh, by the payment of a ransom. So Lutro means um, set a captive free by the payment of a ransom. Uh, we read this in Titus chapter 2, verse uh, 14. Uh, can somebody read that, please? Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, jealous for good works. Amen. Thank you, Subhashish. So here we see uh, the word he might redeem is the Greek word lutro there. Uh, now, how we know that God purchased and paid for our freedom uh, or what happens to us after God has purchased us or redeemed us uh, you know, we are, once he has purchased us, once he has redeemed us from the uh, slave market of sin, of uh, dominion of uh, Satan, we are returned back to our former state. Uh, we are no longer slaves. Uh, we are no longer under the dominion of, of, and the power of sin or Satan. Uh, we are no longer slaves or sin or Satan. Uh, we now become uh, children of God. Uh, we are sons or daughters of God. We are friends with God. And um, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who's declaring uh, the praises of him who brought us from darkness into his marvelous um, light. So how do we know this? Uh, we know this from this uh, Greek word apolutrosis. Uh, so the next Greek word is apolutrosis. And uh, for those of you who joined in late, uh, we are studying the doctrine of redemption. And to study the doctrine of redemption, we are looking at uh, a, a, Greek, a couple of Greek words that talk about this word uh, uh, redeem or redemption. So we look at agarizo, ex agarizo. We looked at uh, uh, lutron. We looked at anti-lutron. And we're looking at uh, lutro now. And apolotrosis is the next Greek word. So apolotrosis means to pay a ransom in order to return us to our former 
state. Okay, so apolutorosis means to pay a ransom in order to return us to our former state. Uh, and this uh, Greek word apolutorosis is mentioned in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 and 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. So can uh, any one of you please read each one of these verses, please? Ephesians 1 7 and 1 Corinthians 1 30. In, in Ephesians 1 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Thank you. So in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, In him we have redemption. So the word redemption there is apolutorosis. Uh, through his blood, that means here, he says, in him, we have, uh, you know, we've been paid a ransom in order to return us to our former state through Christ's blood. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good to learn Greek because it is such a rich language. Um, when we translate that into English, it kind of limits us. Uh, so everywhere we see redeem or redemption, it's not just, uh, it does not mean just the same uh, word or the same meaning, sorry. Uh, it has varied meanings like uh, we saw, you know, it is uh, in one, some places it means go to the slave market. In some places it, it means purchasing us from the slave market. Uh, in some places it also talks about that, uh, you know, we are being uh, ransomed or we've been redeemed uh, so as to return us back to our former state, as we see here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, where it says, you know, we have been redeemed through his blood, which means through his blood, we have been uh, redeemed and we've been uh, uh, redeemed in order to return us back to our former state. Uh, and what is our former state? Our former state is being friends with God, uh, being in a place where we can fellowship with God, we can talk with God, just like Adam and Eve did, okay? Uh, a place where um, we are being made holy, sanctified, a place where we, uh, you know, will receive eternal life. We enjoy it here. It's not something that is uh, uh, something in the future, uh, okay? It is something that we can experience God's eternal life here and now. Uh, we have the mind of Christ where we can uh, uh, we can understand uh, what God is communicating to us. We have the heart of God where our heart is more sensitive uh, to knowing God's will, his plan, his ways, and doing it uh, to honor him. Uh, also, we have a will, a will that is, uh, you know, kind of aligning uh, ourselves to God's will, to his plan and his purpose, not just his uh, specific plans, but also his general plan for all of uh, mankind. Okay. The other place where we see this word apolutrosis is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. So can one of you read that, please? But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so here we see that in Christ Jesus, you know, we've received righteousness, a right standing with God, sanctified, we're being cleansed, being made holy, and uh, we've also been redeemed. The ransom price has been, the redeem, redemption here means that the ransom price has been made and we have been returned to our former state okay so these are a few uh, words in greek uh, that talks about uh, the various facets or the various aspects of uh, redemption so redemption is not just paying up uh, is paying a price and uh, purchasing us but it has other aspects as well as we saw in these uh, greek uh, words okay uh, so what are we redeemed from what are we redeemed from? From the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. Thank you. What else are we redeemed from? Every from the way you the dominion of sin. Uh, thank you for John from uh, sin and the dominion of sin. Yes, Isaac. Just like that, from the wages of sin. 
from the wages of sin, that is death, okay? Thank you. What else are we uh, redeemed from? From darkness into light. Yes, thank you, Supashis. We are redeemed from death. Okay. Uh, so we just look at uh, uh, the various uh, areas that we've been redeemed from. We've been redeemed from the dominion of uh, uh, darkness. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. We already uh, read this verse, so we won't be reading it. Uh, it says that we've been delivered from the power of darkness and we've been conveyed or we've been, uh, you know, uh, taken into the kingdom of the Son of His uh, love through uh, the redemption uh, through His uh, blood. We've also been uh, redeemed, as Zilatoli said, from the curse of the law. Galatians chapter 3, uh, verse 13. We've already read this. Uh, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse Himself. Okay, uh, and the third thing is uh, we are redeemed from every lawless uh, deeds. We learned um, last week in our class that sin is lawlessness. Uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 14 talks about this. We've already read this uh, verse uh, some time back. Um, we see that, uh, you know, um, uh, Christ redeemed us from every lawless deed uh, so that we can be purified for himself to be his own special people uh, and to be zealous for doing good works. Okay. Uh, the fourth thing is we have been redeemed from this present evil age. Uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse uh, 3 and 4. Uh, can somebody read that please? Galatians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the from this precious evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so here we see that, you know, um, uh, Christ has, uh, who gave himself up for us in, so that we might be delivered from this present uh, evil age, okay? So it's not just talking about, that, uh, about uh, the rapture when we'll be delivered, but it also talks about uh, though we live in this present evil age, though we face difficulties, uh, we will have the grace of God uh, to uh, strengthen us, to lift us up, uh, to encourage us, we will have the peace of God, we have the presence of God, uh, and we have his uh, strength uh, 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 to continue to run our race with perseverance. The fifth one is the fear of death, which has already been mentioned. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Can one of you read that, please? Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through that he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Thank you. So here we see that... Uh... You know, we've um, to Christ's death, we have uh, he has destroyed the power of death, uh, and he's uh, released us from the fear of death uh, and from a lifetime of uh, subjection to bondage to uh, eternal death to eternal life. The sixth, uh, uh, you know, area is that the, from the vain manner of life of our forefathers. So, can uh, somebody please? read um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. We've been redeemed from the vain manner of life of our forefathers. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Can one of you read that, please? First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corrupted things like silver or good, from your heinous conduct received by tradition from your father, 
but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Thank you. So we've not been redeemed by the corruptible things like silver or gold, uh, but, you know, uh, um, uh, from our aimless conduct received by tradition from our fathers, okay, but we have been redeemed by the precious blood of Christ and we looked at him being the sinless lamb, the lamb without blemish and without uh, spot. So these are the areas that we've been redeemed from, of course, also from sin, from the bondage of uh, Satan, uh, demonic oppression, and all of those things. Um, and uh, we've been redeemed from all of these things, and we have been restored unto God. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 11 says, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Okay, so uh, in some versions it says we have now received the reconciliation. Uh, in some verses it says it's now, but now we have received the uh, atonement. Okay, um, so the Greek word here for this word atonement or uh, uh, the similar word uh, reconciliation, atonement also means reconciliation, is katelege. Uh, katelege is the Greek word which means atonement or it also means a reconciliation. We uh, see this word katelege in uh, Romans chapter 11, uh, verse 15, where it says, casting away of them to be the reconciling of the world. The casting away of them being the reconciling of the world, what shall, what shall the receiving? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.18 says to us the ministry of reconciliation. God has given us, given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5.19 says uh, he's given us the word of reconciliation. So in all of these places uh, is the Greek word katalege. Uh, it also means uh, atonement. Uh, now in the New Testament, uh, you know, rarely uses the word for atonement. Uh, so the basic Greek word is katalasso, uh, which is usually translated to mean uh, to reconcile. Uh, and the noun form of this uh, verb uh, of the Greek word kataloso is katalege, uh, which means a reconciliation. Uh, and it basically means, uh, you know, establishing a friendship. Okay. Uh, so kata, the word, the Greek word kata means down. Uh, and aloso, kataloso, which means uh, to change or exchange. Uh, so the, the Greek word kataloso means to change from enmity or change from disharmony uh, to friendship to harmony or it means to reconcile okay so uh, wherever you see in these passages which i have mentioned uh, in romans chapter 5 romans chapter 11 15 second corinthians 5 18 second corinthians 5 19 uh, it means atonement or reconciliation which is the greek word katalege and uh, uh, or it is uh, katalege noun. The kataliso is uh, the verb form of this of this word katalege, and it basically means uh, to change or exchange. Uh, it so it means to change from enmity or disharmony uh, to friendship and harmony. Basically, it means to uh, reconcile. Okay. So uh, if you look at your notes. Um, it says their exchange, which means uh, uh, business of money changers or exchanging equivalent values, uh, or it basically means uh, reconciliation or restore restoration to favor. So you just need to know that this Greek word katalege uh, or kataleso uh, basically means to exchange or change from enmity and disharmony uh, to friendship and harmony, or it means to reconcile, to be reconciled back to God, to be restored in our relationship back to uh, God. So in the New Testament, uh, the Greek words uh, basically refer to the restoration of the favor of God to sinners who repent of their sins and put their trust in the expiatory death of Christ. The word expiation means uh, removal of our sin or guilt. So Christ uh, is the, expi uh, the expiratory work of Christ means he's removed 
uh, our sin, he's removed our guilt. So those who put their trust in what Jesus has done, that he has removed our sin and guilt by dying on the cross, by giving his very life, uh, and they repent of their sins, uh, we see that they receive a restoration uh, of the fa and the favor of God, favor of God in the terms of restoration, being restored back in their relationship with God from being enemies to being now friends with God. So that is what uh, is the meaning of that word, uh, Greek word, katalege or katalasso. Okay. Um, and we see that Christ is our redemption. Uh, uh, you know, he has, he's the only one who could pay uh, the price that God demanded for our uh, redemption from sin and slavery. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 says, But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and uh, redemption. That means he redeemed us back to our former uh, state. Okay, so God demanded the price. The price was uh, the wages of sin is death. And we see that Jesus Christ, the mediator, came and was the mediator between a man and God. And uh, he died in our place so that he could restore our relationship back to God, uh, restore us back to our former state by purchasing us uh, from sin and from slavery. Okay. So that is uh, the doctrine of redemption. Uh, next class, we will look at the doctrine of uh, justification. Uh, does anyone have any questions, any doubts, or anything that you did not understand, I can explain again? No questions, no doubts? So your uh, test on and doctrinal foundations is on uh, March 4th, right? Is that right? Yes. March, yes, March 4th. Okay. So that's uh, next Friday. Yeah. Okay. Anyone has any questions? Any comments? Any doubts? Can I ask a popular question? Sure, Isaac. Yeah, why is um, Jesus Christ always referred to as the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was slain before time? I just want to know. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, Jesus, uh, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, the whole of Old Testament or the, uh, the nation of Israel revolves around the spiritual aspect is basically their spiritual sacrifices that God had instituted. And uh, we see that, uh, you know, the uh, the Passover feast that was celebrated, uh, uh, the atonement that had to be made, the yearly atonement where, uh, you know, the lamb was sacrificed and the blood was taken by the high priest into the Holy of Holies, sprinkled on uh, the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. And uh, the priest would then come out and place his hands on another lamb and let it go out uh, as the scapegoat. Okay, and also a lot of other sacrifices where it, uh, it had to do with trespass offering, uh, day and night uh, offerings or anything, uh, you know, it all had to, uh, was revolving around the lamb that was being sacrificed uh, day in and day out for uh, the covering or the atonement for the sins of uh, mankind. It would, and so that God would come and God could come and relate uh, two people, he could speak to them, he could be in their very presence. So uh, we see that Jesus uh, is referred time and again to uh, the sinless Lamb of God to remind us of uh, uh, the, the full sufficient perfect sacrifice that uh, Jesus made on behalf of our sins. He paid the punishment for our sins. And uh, the grace period that we are living in now is uh, is not something that we can take for granted because it was a, a high price was paid uh, for the sins of mankind. And it was done through uh, Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, who made the full sufficient sacrifice. And the reason why we do not uh, uh, receive the wrath of God, though he is a just God, uh, he is still just, he is still righteous when he sees sin 
he automatically pronounces uh, his judgment uh, or the punishment, but we do not receive the punishment is because Jesus is our mediator. And more than that, uh, it, it, before the throne of God is the lamb that looks that as he was uh, slain. So to, re to remind us of uh, the, the sacrifice that God has made, uh, that Jesus has made, and also for God to know that the sacrifice for my sin has been made, and therefore that I don't receive the punishment, but what comes out is just grace and mercy. But there will be a time when uh, Jesus will no longer be seen as uh, um, uh, the Lamb of God, but he will come as the Lion of Judah, uh, Lion in the sense that he will come to rule and reign, uh, and uh, he will come to rule and reign, and he will come to rule and reign with, um, you know, with an iron fist, like it says in the sun, he'll bring about judgment, uh, he will bring about um, vindication, he will judge the nations, he will judge the people, and, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, you know, when the final judgment takes place, there is no more the Lamb of God that is there, uh, and there's no more forgiveness of sins because, you know, that time period is already up and done. And now he comes, uh, he is the Lion of Judah who will judge people, uh, who will rule his people uh, as uh, as a king and he will, uh, he will uh, you know, pronounce the judgment. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, the two things about the two symbols uh, that uh, of Jesus, one as uh, the Lamb of God, the other as the Lion of Judah. So now he's uh, fulfilling his role as uh, the Lamb of God who's made the full sufficient sacrifice, but he will come soon as, uh, uh, you know, the Lion of uh, Judah. And Isaac, you had asked something else. I forgot. Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, the lamb that was slain before uh, the foundation of the world. Uh, it's talking about uh, even before the foundation of the world in God's uh, mind, uh, his plan of redemption was already a complete and done thing. For him, It he already foresaw Jesus dying on the cross, paying for the sins of the whole world. And so it was a done, completed thing in the mind of God, even before it happened in history, in time, uh, as he had planned and purposed. So I hope I answered your question, Isaac. Yeah, perfectly. Thank you very much, Lord. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm missing. Yes? Yes, Rosalind. No, uh, this is not from the lesson. I just wanted to know whether I was able to uh, submit my assignment because it shows here uh, uh, in my um, Google Classroom, it shows missing. So I'm not understanding what it okay. is. Okay, uh, don't worry. I'll um, after I have two more hours now, so I have to rush off to my next class, and all of you have to go for your next class. But I will check it, and then I will uh, uh, I will uh, I'll I post the, uh, uh, your details on the stream page. Is that all right? Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, I let you know. Okay, thank you everyone for joining class. It was a good class today. Thank you for uh, being interactive and. Uh, uh, have a good day. Uh, God bless you all. Sorry, I have to rush off to my next class. So, bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, Ma. Thank you. Bye -bye,